Yeah, man. My life. Nah, we we good, we good. Just get it ready. It can have like four minutes of dead space. Let me, let me uh, get my light the right, man. God. There we go. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? All right, we coming right now. I know y'all see Garvey and Patrice. <clears throat> they always got our back. But yeah, let's set it off real quick. The Green Love Show about to drop. In 11 minutes. On the mic, real time. Yo, let me tell you something. What, man, Pitts called his sister, his eldest sister. He went to her store. Wait, 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 wait. Can this be on the show? It got to be on the show, man. Okay, hold on. Let's start the show real quick and then. Hold on. Let me get some issues. Hey, man, these are the best. In I think she's from the East Coast. Hold, it, sure. hold it down. Hold it down because I want to get right. new. Hold on, hold on. Let me go get the incense. Let me go get All the right. incense. Man. Hold on. Let me go get a few incense. You keep that for the show. Yeah. That's cool. All right. All right, I'm right here, brother Rebel. Peace, 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 Black African power. Black power. Hello. We back, we back, we back, we back. I'm your host, Rebel with a cause. And this is my co-host. And why do I kill? And welcome to Rebel's Roundtable. Uh, like, Round share, subscribe, Rebel Vision Television, uh, rebelvision.com, Shelly Set Products.com. And you know, I'll let us. We, we got some shit for the family. But peace to the God. What's good, baby? What's good, brother man? I heard you a superstar out of town. What's going on? <laughs> going hey, man, on? We've, been, we've been here in Pensacola, Florida for the past, what, two months, man? Nah, let me tell you something. Every time we go down there, man, Shady don't never bring enough products, man. They love you guys. Man. Let me ask a question. Yeah, uh, yeah. Can you tell it's a dry spot? There's no yeah, no most definitely. over there. Because uh, some people know 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 these products and stuff, but most people don't. But they know it's their product. Finally, right, some black, right. Some black care products and all that. Right, right. They love them, man. Now I love uh, dry spots. It's not for the money. It's more for feeding the people they they never had it never had it when you see them see it for the first time you know close up that look that they like yeah that's my shit forever now man you should see the smile on their face man <laughs> that's what's up oh there was a lot of people out there oh yeah so what it is it's this flea market down there on the weekends right the 10w flea market in Pensacola, florida W. And every weekend, the whole town just comes to the flea market. It's like something they do. You know what I mean? And it rained on us, man. That Saturday, it didn't rain on us. But that Sunday, we only stayed out there for three hours. And guess what? We get there good for them three hours. Exactly. exactly. I'm going to tell you first. I'm going to give you the number. That Sunday, we stayed out there for three uh, three hours. You made a little over $300 for three hours. That's $100 an hour. Right. Who, who could go wrong? That's some surgeon money. Right. right. Ain't it rain hard, man. That's bugged out because at the uh, Malcolm X Fest, it ain't rain at all. We told yeah. Ogun, we told Ogun to 
Block the rain, the crack and try yeah. to block the rain and shit. Yeah, now I just said a whole lot of people asked about me. Uh, we ain't telling where we was at, man. We yeah, just doing something different, man. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, I'm the beat, man. I'm happy about it, man. You know, uh, Shelly and uh, your queen, Sister Shep, will go down there for Juneteenth and they go hit the market. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to tell you one thing. Okay, before I tell the story, right? Yeah. It's a sister. She an elder, Latifa Khalid. She have an incense store, man, at the TNW flea market in Pensacola, Florida. Man, her incense, I never smelled no incense like, like this. I think she's from the East Coast. She's not from Florida. You can tell she migrated from Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think she's from the East Coast, but I'm not for sure. You know what I mean? The best incense you ever heard, man. Look, I told Shady when she go down there, we're going to have to get a $100 worth of goddamn incense, man. I'm talking about, man. Yeah. Like that? This shit gangster, man. She got this shit gangster. She got the ancient Kim approaching on. And guess what? We need the mother brothers down there, brother. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Look, uh, so I had, you know, it was raining, so I had my, uh, you know, my umbrella from Ancient Chemistry. Y'all need to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, one of these. She was like, oh, she wanted to buy. Hey, look, yep, that's that's it. She wanted to buy my umbrella. I, I sister, no, nah, sister. We're going to be down here next month, and I'm going to get you your umbrella. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 no <laughs> she problem. was on it. My umbrella, I showed the both of them. You know what I mean? You know, Shelly got one, and I got one. No. That's peace. Uh, the bug part is uh, uh, what's his name? Um, um, brother from um, the West Side. Uh, Say that again. Trying to remember his name. Um, uh, I said it last show. Son who make the crowns. Olu. Oh, Ola. Olu. Olu. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. blood. Yeah, good brother right there. He damn near cleaned me out of the umbrellas like three weeks ago. He came in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he took it, almost all of them. But I still got a few. But I'm making an order now. Yeah. No, we, we still got some umbrella. Um, we're going to take the sister down. And like I said, she want to buy my umbrella. <laughs> yeah, we got. All right, sister. No, she an elder. She a nana. I got you. But yeah, yeah. Let's, let's all right. We, we, that, that's the pleasant trees. What's up with these crackers shooting? Man, so that's a motherfucking right? plan, man. Right. Niggas don't kill nothing. Don't kill nothing. But the, but ourselves. Like yep. niggas are shooting the hood. But what's it's up? Self hate, man. We need to turn them motherfucking guns in in another direction because man, if you go shoot, don't shoot yourself. Shoot them. See, one thing I always say, they already know. They they know who their enemies are. They know we the enemy. I think it's I think it's a bigger link, cause I you know they trying to take the guns off the shelf. The real that ain't gonna one. never happen. You know why that's not gonna never happen? Because the NRA, they are um, they sponsor those Republicans. You know what I mean? They fund them Republicans. That'll never happen, man. But they love to use these uh, false flags, or you know. To say, yo, we need to take the guns. We need to take the guns. Yeah, that's bullshit. That that should have never happened. But the motherfuckers, the NRA, no doubt, fund and support those motherfucking Republicans. That never happened. But they do be taking some of the guns off the shelf. They be banning some of them shits, like like certain AR-15s. You know what I mean? There's some guns off the list. They don't have all of them or, or the big bulk, but they be trying to take them. It's really the guns that could pierce armor because when, yeah. they, when they do the purge, they don't want nobody with real guns. Right. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. But uh, remember Roger Kalanji, he had said something to me, man. He had something. I think he, he had made a post too. That shit don't never stop because it's over 400 million guns in the United States period. Yeah, now the bug part of that is a low percentage on most of them. That's not like 400 million people got a gun. Right. That's like 50 million people hold guns. So, 
So we got to get our arse in the world. And I, and I can tell you one thing, we better wake the fuck up, man, because, um, man, these white right people shoot. They they teach their kid, kids out the womb to shoot. Over there, about 10 minutes away where I'm not yet, they be in the wood. Bah, 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 bah. They teaching their kids at the young age. All day. See, it ain't bad to know how to shoot. It's only bad when you shoot the wrong people for the right. wrong reasons and shit. But right. To me, I think everybody should have a gun. Yeah. You crazy if you don't. Everybody be nice. You crazy if you don't. If I shoot you, I'm brainless. If you shoot me, then you famous. What's a nigga to do? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that Malcolm X Fest was fire. Salute to Ross Isis and, uh, and Cozy. He had his birthday on the Sunday. And the Malcolm X Fest always be dope, man. Always, man. No, it ain't. We this this the first Malcolm X Festival in about three years. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, you know, I was talking to all the vendors. So right. They, they was a little. They was they was mediocre happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a little trading going on. Yeah, because it, it's only so much you can do with this virtual bullshit, man. You need to be with the people, man. Feel that energy, man. Yes, sir. We we before that, you know. The boxing, you know, with Mama Marimba, man, that was the biggest turnout that I ever seen. I've been going to the boxing soon, soon. This is gonna be like my fourth year. People want to come out. It's a different energy, man. You feel the people. You well, know what I mean, the pandemic. The pandemic. We're not gonna say the name because <laughs> YouTube be wild. <laughs> the pandemic over though. So everybody go back outside, yo. I want to see kids playing ball. Right. Hopscotch. I seen some girls the other day in the street with the chalk. And they was doing oh, the whole yeah. street. So yeah. I was like, all right. 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 Hey, uh, when, we, hey we be, when we be going down to the flea market event, it's, it's a uh, Jamaican brother. He, he be at the next booth. And he sell like natural lemonades and whatever, man. He should fire you till you, I mean, Sister Shep go see when they go down there for uh, June 10th. But um, hey man, he had his daughter. That's what you're saying. He had the chop, they had the um chop drawing in, in on the concrete and all that, man. Let them be little kids, man. Word. Cause life happens too quick, man. She gonna be 15 looking at boys. So yeah. <clears throat> make sure they they have that childhood. Right. Don't let them. Remember when we was coming up, we can't. Did they tell us get out the room and somebody start cursing or something? Yep. You know, like, that was the law. Or something. Like, you know, go in the room. Yep. That was the law. Uh oh. Green love dropping. Okay. Oh, yeah. Green love. Yeah. Okay, cool. Green love drop. That was a dope interview, man. Yeah, yeah. Salute to Javon and um, Madeline. Green Love Kitchen. Go check them out in Lithonia. Yeah, Main Street, downtown Lithonia, Green Love Kitchen. Right next to the famous Black, Black Dot Bookstore. Black Dot. and upload it. <clears throat> that was the one I put before that. So, yeah, it's about to drop right now. I want that intro different too. Where did you get the intro from? Tariq? Uh -huh. I think something. Uh, Tariq? Yeah, yeah. How that heard <clears throat> me do? Tariq Edmondson. Okay, Black Power Banger in the building. Yeah, Black, Black, Black Power Banger. Why is it not face now? Call it, man. Yeah, man, I, uh, 
I probably took um with um brother Sutek, man. Oh well, yeah, he was out there. No, no, no. He called me, man. We probably took for about about twenty minutes. There we yeah. go. Got power bank. My brothers. My brother, what's going on, brother man? Power bang in the building. Peace Trying to stay out the way. Hold on, let me get right. What's been going on, brother man? How you been? How you I, been? I, I, I need to get. Let me get some of my weapons. <laughs> yeah, go get my weapon too, baby. <laughs> hey, look. Let me get some of my my weapon. Yeah, yeah, that red, that RBG yeah. shit, man. You know how we live. You know, you feel me? You gotta put the weapons on. That nice right. chain right there. Woo! I need one of those. Yeah, hey, look, when I'm on that iron, riding that motorcycle, I got this big chunky thing just swinging. It Sweet. looks good. They like, yo, who is that? I never seen no brothers like that before. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, man? What? Tell us about the shootings, man. So with these white boys, man. Well, uh, whoa, that's uh, I haven't really like, like, uh, really looked at much of it, but I know the, the one in Buffalo, I seen some about it and I heard about it. It was another one, yeah. Really, they think that they're doing something that's going to further their cause, they're doing something that's bringing a demise to them more than it is actually helping them because. They got the power right now. And by them having the power, it, it's like they're using muscle in a time where compassion, they, they need the velvet glove, but they're using the iron fist. And the iron fist ain't gonna do in a time where there's water, it's gonna rust it. I mean, they they and we in the age of Aquarius, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. The water yeah. bringer, yeah, they go rust the iron fist about to get rusted, man. <laughs> Yeah, what they doing, like you said, it, it doesn't really help their cause. If white supremacy is that, that's not, we could tell you that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're like, you you ruining your own cause. You want to make the government come and take some big ass guns you got. I mean, they what, what they'll do, they'll try to attack everybody and everybody guns. But uh, it were, actually works more in our benefit. And it's crazy that we're going to have to, that we have to sacrifice so many and allow so many to be sacrificed for ours to realize that we have to be vigilant, that we have to be on guard, that we have to be on protecting our communities. That is crazy that that's what it have to take. But you know, we were just talking about that, uh, my daughter, my queen, and uh, about our societal decay. And I was trying to explain to him that that's nothing. It's about to get worse. And I was also trying to explain to him how like gang members shooting at each other is different. It's not the same as what the Buffalo shooter did. And they were saying, oh, well, is it because of racial motivation? It's beyond racial motivation. It's because gangs are considered two militaries that's fighting versus a, a military person going at civilians. Yeah. And that, that'd be now a military personnel going at civilians would be considered terrorism. Two gangs fighting, two war gangs fighting each other is two people that want to fight, no matter if they fight with guns or fight with fists or, you know what I mean? It, it's different. But then we got a society of people that just viewing it the same. It, it's uh, that's why that's why it's hard to categorize it and to get our people behind a cause to protect. Well, what about the gangs? You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to organize people when the mindset are different. Yeah, I know, and there's so many mind frames today <clears throat> going each and every direction. It, it seemed like every negative pattern of history got a place on stage today. So, you know, you could kind of do whatever you want, literally. So it's a lot of work. <clears throat> it's a lot of work. That mountain is big that's sitting in front of us. But we chopping away, we chopping away. How was That's your right. weekend? How was your Malcolm X weekend? Oh, that, hold on. Oh, you know what? I was in Cincinnati. Yeah, you told yeah. You was in I was in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. How was it? But, was uh, man, it, it was cool. It was real good. Uh, 
connected with brothers in the sea of a brotherhood that cross state lines. You know what I mean? Uh, man, just just to be able to, I mean, to see that in having more ideals of places that it can go. And I need to get at you in the studio because I got some I got some things I want to do. Yeah, we gotta link up uh, definitely. Uh, when you trying to do that? I got it. Uh, you know what? I need some beats, but we'll we'll talk after this. All right. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, just call me after after we get offline, and yeah. All right, definitely. That's what I. Because yeah. anybody about to hit the studio? Ooh, with. that's fly. That is mm -hmm. fly. That fist is cold. I need that picture on my wall in the house. For water. Where you get that fist from, King? You can hear us? You're probably on mute. Where that black fist from? You're probably on mute. Yeah, he muted. Yeah. You was talking to me? Yeah, yeah, where that black fist from? Black Power Bangle on it. What black power fist? Oh, that probably was, that wasn't him? Nah, that's your oh. eye. Are you talking about my black fist? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, off the internet. Oh man, hey, that's that fish, that fish fly. Yeah, that's the hard shit, man. That's the RBG shit. You know what I mean? All that that part. That <laughs> part. That part, that part. Yo, so who we got on the show tonight? You know, we got Dr. Sebi, baby. Um, Dr. Inky, Dr. Dr. Inky. Gonna be back in the house. The rabbit got the gun. Brother man, the guy, Dr. Inky. He'll be, he'll be on in a few, man. You know what I mean? All right. Another weekly, monthly report from Dr. Inky. That's right. That's right. But yeah, just like last week with Green Love, how, you know, the medicine is in the food. Right. And, and God put our natural balance in everything around us. So nature has to be the number one move for the future. We got to get natural again, cause right. the yeah. death list is crazy. Man, got to put away them pork chops, the fried chicken, the sirloin steak, and all of that. French fries, got to man. Ain't doing nothing but killing us. You know what I mean? It's hot blood pressure all day. Especially yeah, say that pig. Especially that pig. That's a no no. If food but is your medicine. That yeah. mean that your refrigerator have to be your medicine cabinet. Mm, right. That's dope. Somebody should make that shirt. That shit would be fine. I think Inky coming in right now. <clears throat> Inky. Let's give a black hand. That's the black hand. God. <laughs> Peace to the God. Dr. Inky. Dr. Inky in the building, y'all. Right. What's going How on? How you doing, man? brother? Black Moon. All right, all right. Live. Can you hear us? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. Salute, salute to you. I see you on your tour. I see you on a lot of people's platforms. Yeah, Zulu, 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 brother. Zulu. 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 I like that. Yeah, just trying to get the um trying to get the word out, man, you know, um, yeah, we're doing some different shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we, are we, did we start yet? Yeah, we all not. Oh, okay. We, we've been in the show, but do your thing. Oh, hey, okay, that, okay. That, 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 that hoodie hard though, man. Oh, yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. We, we got a whole line of, of everything. It's at uh, polyibic.com, P-O-L-Y-I-B-I-C.com. Um, but yeah, just trying to get like, I don't know. It's, it's always hard when you're trying to reinvent the wheel. You know what I'm saying? When you're trying to do something new, you know, especially if what you're doing kind of looks like something else and it's people just, it's, it's crazy. So, you know, trying to, to put this summit together and really get people to support it like they should, you know, I, people don't understand why. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand why is it different from any other health lecture that we've been to, or, you know, like, you know, why should I like reallocate 
you know, resources or whatever to really help. Like, what is what this is? You know, you're just trying to go up there, speak your health shit, and sell some of your products, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of what niggas do. You know, you go up there, speak your shit. Hey, don't eat meat. Stay off the cigarettes. And uh, yeah, take some of these herbs I got right here. And uh, yeah, that's Drink. nutshell. Like, I'm like, this is not that. You know what I'm saying? Yesterday's lecture is not today's lecture. You know what I'm saying? Like, what we trying to do is, um, first things first, we got a, 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 a groundbreaking, you know, um, world changing understanding of diabetes. All right, that's a thing. Um, it's my do at midnight, my little ones turn seven and they are tearing this motherfucker up right now. It's day night, it's day night. <laughs> Going insane in here right now. Um, don't break anything. The kale got them running around. What? <laughs> they on that sauce for real, boy. Um, but so we, you know. We, this is some, some world changing, you know what I'm saying? And the whole idea is when I put out the article, you know, for the most part, people don't really understand the implications of it, you know what I'm saying? But the folks that do, you know, they like, you know, maybe we can, you know, maybe we can build something around this guy. So the idea is that uh, city councilman Rob and the uh, the other governor, because you know we got you know a, a bunch of government people participating. You know what I'm saying? So right off the back, he was like, "Hold on, Inky with them people, <laughs> Inky with them people." You know what I'm saying? But uh, let me let you guys in on something. Um, everybody who's doing real shit is with those quote unquote people. You know what I'm saying? Like I never understood how, you know, the the quote unquote conscious woke the militants like we're waiting for athletes celebrities and those types of people to turn back around and do something positive with their money but all their money comes from contracts they got with them people like so like it doesn't make any sense to be in that space where we like nah why, why would i you know like where i'm from we cut the middleman out like I, I might as well go see them and get my bag and you know what i'm saying so um they want to the conversation is we want to build nationwide clinics, holistic medical clinics. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know, the doctors, the, the, uh, the medical doctors are working with the holistic doctors. And then, you know, we want to push some legislation to get the holistic doctors and the naturopathic doctors to be able to accept insurance, Medicaid, because um, that'll change the game. If you could get you know, your Dr. Sebi, Dr. Inky, you know, uh, Victor, KT, whoever, you know, if you could go get your products with Medicaid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can go get your CMOS with Medicaid. You know what I'm saying? If you went to the hospital and you in the hospital, you you know, and I got to, you know, I'm, I'm working at the hospital. You know what I'm saying? It's not... You're not going into some underground weird space to see your holistic guy or your naturopathic guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the hospital now. I work for the hospital. I'm in the hospital. So when you get your diagnosis or whatever, whatever, you have an option. You know, I can come out, sit down at your bedside and consult with you and say, well, this is the way, you know, we probably do this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go with this option and then you can, have can, your specialist. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question with that? Yeah. Well, how would that work? Wouldn't that cut in today? Wouldn't that cut in today? Money setting us, uh, when we go to the hospital, they're giving us these drugs and they're making money off these drugs? Not exactly, yeah. no. Okay. Because um, before the pandemic hit, there was a, um, a nationwide shortage of nurses and doctors. So right. a lot of the carnage that happened with the pandemic, a lot of that was because you just, you just had people in the street, sick people just, you know, and then you got understaffed, undereducated people that don't know what to do. So it's like, oh, mm -hmm. they're having trouble breathing. Well, we, we use ventilators for that. Then come to find out ventilators is knocking folks off. You know what I'm saying? Like, but there was no other option. And I learned years ago when I was doing a tour with Abundance Child, shout out to Abundance Child Drop Squad Kitchen. 
I was doing a tour with her and, you know, because she was there, she was speaking, um, a lot of it got, you know, it was kind of like geared towards women's health and stuff like that. Um, and in that space, I started to really study up on what was going on with the sisters. And, you know, a lot of sisters had, uh, still do, uh, trouble. You go in the hospital, you're getting partial hysterectomies or full hysterectomies, and you, you just didn't understand that you, you, you know, you came in the hospital with one thing and left with half a vagina. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, you know, like, we just, so I, in that space, I started to study and research and I'm like, oh, okay, this is the same as niggas electing Joe Biden and then wondering why the country's upside down right now. So right, right. The, the, the head, the father of GYN, you know, uh, the OB, the OB, uh, obstetrics or whatever it's called, uh, Marion, something or other. He was like a, a super wild racist. You know, he was cutting people bones out and he was raping, like he was a wild guy. So you got to understand that some of the chaos of the creator is going to be in the invention. And to take it a step further, little things that I never knew growing up as, you know, just a kid in the Bronx, because, you know, we, like most black folks, we don't go to hospital. We don't make regular trips to the hospital. Hospital is like a place you go. If something that you can't handle at home, then you go to the emergency room. Like that's kind of the plan. You know what I'm saying? If you can't take care of it at the house, you hit emergency room. I find out when I start getting into my study that there's different rules that apply to you if you go into the hospital through the front door versus going into the hospital through emergency room. You know what I'm saying? So you're much more likely to see a doctor, an actual real doctor, if you go through the front door and you have an appointment. If you go through emergency room, the act of you going into emergency room literally means that they can do almost anything they imagine within their range and scope of, of information to take care of your emergency. You know what I'm saying? And you don't really have doctors in those scenarios. A lot of times that's where your interns are. That's where your nurses are. You know what I'm saying? That's where the folks that really don't have the education, they don't have the credentials for the big money. So, so they got to work the, the shit show. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, that's how that go. You don't want to be in the emergency room with stabbings and dope fiends. And like, you know, there's also regular people coming through there, but it's a lot of wild shit coming through the emergency room. So when you get your weight up in the hospital, you're like, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not emergency. I'm, you got to see me upstairs. You got to see me by appointment. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, so I learned that just them things, you know, just little small things, you know what I'm saying? Like that, like you go into emergency room, you're not going to get, you, you're, you're judging the care you're receiving by somebody who's going into the front door that may have a family doctor or that may be on, you know, regular visits. And th that's just not how it works. You know what I'm saying? So all of them things, we got to get in the game. You know what I'm saying? We got to get educated on how this shit work and then figure out what we need to do to change it. We got to put up some bread or we got to, you know, just, we got to sit, you know, like, like I will, you know, just 70 years ago, you know what I'm saying? Our people was out there getting hoses and dogs sucked sick yeah. on them and German shepherds and hitting the head with police sticks and all this shit. You can't even get niggas to sit at home and send fucking cash apps in now for a movement. Like, like, nigga, you, you, what is, what do we come to? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Shit is insane. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you can sit at home in your boxes and help the revolution happen by sending in cash apps. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't, we don't even want to do that much. Like we, we scrutinizing that. You know what I'm saying? Like we'd rather send cash apps to entertainment than like it's just. But all of it takes, you know. And then we've got to facilitate the people that are taking their time to do that. Because if if you out there figuring all these things out, but that's the time that you could be working at a job or working your own business to take care of your family. So if you're going to work for the people instead, the people have to recognize that value and renumerate you. You know what I'm saying? But we live in a world where people rather pay top dollars for their shoes and go to Google for the health information. You know what I'm saying? Like, hold on, that's kind of a problem. I'm not saying don't pay top dollars for the shoes, but I'm saying if your life is worth less than your outfit, nigga, like what are we doing right now? You know what I'm saying? And people are like, nah, my life is my life is clearly worth more than my outfit. I'm like, okay, let's do some math, right? I, I am the I am one of the founders 
of the nonprofit organization Melanin Diabetes Research, right? So, so that's an actual real thing, right? So let's just ask anybody you know, like, hey, you smoke weed? Most people are going to be like, yeah, I blow a little trees. Okay, cool. How much money this month have you spent on blunt wraps? I don't know. I might blow an L a day, two, three L's a day. So maybe, you know, I might spend $30, $90, $100 maybe a month on blunt wraps. Okay, cool. How much money this month have you, how much money this month have you spent on your own genetic research? If the number is lower than the amount of money you spent on blunt wraps, that is the problem. That's why the kids are shooting each other in the street. That's why the diabetes rate is the way it is. That's why the rates of education, that's the reason. That, and that's the only reason because we do not understand research and development. Every other group of people on this planet has research and development. We spend the money that should go to research and development in the strip club. It goes on the strip club floor. You know what I'm saying? It goes to the blunt wraps. It goes to all these loose items. And you go, okay, I'm not saying not to have those items. I'm from 158th Street in the Bronx. I'm with the shits all the way around. Comma, however, we got to prioritize shit. My guy, you spent more money this month on Newports than you spent on your own genetic research. How many of these conscious niggas in these uh, YouTube universes have you been hearing about all these years? Melanin this, pineal fucking gland that, you know, all of this goofball shit. Ask those niggas how much money they have actually put up to real research for those things in real time, zero. So all of the conversations of motherfuckers that's talking shit about what they could do and what we need to do and how we need to unify and all this bullshit, it's just empty fucking talk. Because the moment you say, all right, cool, guys, I got this. I'm, I'm doing the actual research. Send me the money so we can get this done. Oh, uh, yo, yeah, uh, okay. Um, but see, what happened was, because, you know, because gas and, you know, like, but you high. So gas is not killing you because you, you still high, though. You, you still got your cigarettes. You still got your beer. You still got your bottles. You, you still got your soda. You still, what are you talking about? The, the gas price can't be killing your research that you put into studying your, the only fucking thing that matters on this earth. The only real form of wealth that exists is your genetics. And we spend zero fucking dollars as a people on researching that. You know what I'm saying? That is the crisis. And that's why I've been really focusing on this identity crisis thing because motherfuckers running around, oh yeah, we black. Oh yeah, we, we niggas. Oh yeah, we this, we that. Okay, well, we American. Okay, what does, what does any of that mean? Because if you don't know what that means, that's the problem, right? So I'm having these conversations and all these conversations lead me down the same road. They're just like, oh yeah, well, you know, you know, we busting our gun and keeping shit real. And you know, that's black folks. And you know, we, you know, black folks do this and black. Okay. So how is it that you associate being black with being a criminal? And you can't say you don't associate being black with being a criminal because if you use illegal drugs every day, you're a, that's a criminal. If you buy and sell, buy or sell illegal drugs every day, that's a criminal. That's a career criminal because you do it every day. If you talk about shooting people and getting shot, that's a career criminal. How then can you complain if the police pull you over or somebody that looks like you and shoots them on spot? They supposed to be scared because you're telling the fucking world you're a criminal. And even further than telling the world you're a criminal, you're telling the world that your culture is to be a criminal. That's why I'm like, I, I'm a Haitian. You know what I'm saying? It's, oh, oh, you, you, you out. Oh, we know about the Haitians. You know, Haitians don't like American blacks. No, that's a lie. Haitians just don't want to be criminalized. You know what I'm saying? And that's what a lot of these folks, if you notice, a lot of folks that's black, brown, whatever from other countries, they fuck with American blacks, but to a, just, uh, to an extent. 
They're like, the moment you start to accept McDonald's as a part of your culture, they have to get you, hit you with the hand. Er, yeah, that's not a part of my culture. We don't, that's, McDonald's is not a part of our culture. The moment you think that Italian food is a part of your culture, they, er, yeah, we, we not from Italy. That's lasagna though. That's not our shit though. So yeah, we, yeah, we clearly different from you niggas because that's, that's not a part of our culture right there. Right, the right. moment 11 year olds waving their guns around in the fucking camera is talking about they, they, they did whatever with the ops and all this other goofball shit. And, and you like, oh yeah, that's, that's the black culture. That's our cultural music. Them motherfuckers like, er. again, sorry, respectfully, but uh, yeah. If you niggas identify with these 11 year olds that are killing each other as culture and the music they produce to brag about killing each other as culture, then we have to disassociate from you niggas because that's not, that's not what we do. That's not, that's not, that's not Haitian. That's not Jamaican. That's not Ghanaian. That's not West African. That's not Caribbean. That's not Brazilian. That's not, that's not indigenous. Indigenous folks don't fucking kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? They, that's not, and, and they don't call it culture when they fucking do it. So all of these issues is coming from a crisis. You know what I'm saying? Of identity, even the sickness, because the main thing that runs consistent, whether you talk to me or you run back some Dr. Sabi shit or whatever, is food, people, consistency. Your diet should be coupled to your haplotype and should be coupled thus further to your daily activity. It's impossible. It's impossible for brown and black people all over the world, right? Pigmented people, highly pigmented people to eat a diet with no pigment in it. Like we literally are missing the boat. Processed food is food that has the pigment removed. That's literally what the fuck processed food is. They remove the pigment. So how is it that we think that the pigmented people could eat a diet with no pigment and still remain healthy? Like none of that makes any sense. You know what I'm saying? Can I ask a question right there. Cause I had wrote down the question is how can we keep the herbs natural if we knowing that the GMO, they doing GMOs. Since um, they, since when you we say know that herbs, they, you mean like you mean like weed or you mean medicinal? I mean, no, like, no, I'm like talking about herbs, so if we're like talking about herbs. no natural healing herbs, natural medicine. For the most how can part, we keep it natural without them of, taking the pigment? Yeah, for out. the most part, healing herbs are not GMO. They haven't really hit the um they haven't really hit the GMO market like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, you got some stuff that's kind of super commercial. You know what I'm saying? Like GMO hits for supply and demand mostly. You know what I'm saying? Like the reason why they use GMO is to synthetically reproduce stuff at higher rates. But right now, there's not really a demand like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So so if insurance start to, let's just say what you said, because you said something earlier that you was, uh, you were the group that's trying to get get it passed to where insurance will accept naturopathic medicine. I got you. So you're saying and with everybody jumps on, how will we prevent GMO? Yes. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I think that um, honestly, we throw away so many medicinal herbs every day that once people recognize the value, the, it's unlimited. Like the like natural herbs and algae is unlimited. It's, it's like everybody right now, think about it. Everybody across the country, everybody uses pesticides on weeds. You know what I'm saying? To pesticide, you know, the weeds at their house. You know what I'm saying? In most places you live, there's laws about how wild you can let your grass grow. Like if it get too high, they'll hit you with a ticket and shit like that. But what most people don't know is that every single one of those weeds is medicinal. Every one of them is medicinal. Those are the medicinal plants, the ones that you kill with the, the weeds. Those are the medicinal plants, like the queen ants lace. Um, remember, Dr. Savior said, uh, get the natural plants. The natural plants are the ones that grow without the help of man. The ones that and grow the without one. the help of man are the weeds. You know what I'm saying? The ones that need help to grow are the synthetics. You know what I'm saying? So you're growing all these goofy grasses year round like them. They need help. You know what I'm saying? Because if the weeds pop up, the weeds going to snuff them out. 
And so in America, your most popular weeds are burdock root grows everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like my house is covered. My whole neighborhood is covered. And what do people do? Pesticides on it, chop it off, trash it. Dandelion grows everywhere like wildfire. You know what I'm saying? In the morning in my backyard, I always got like three, four, five rabbits back there because I don't really pesticide my stuff in the backyard. And so the rabbits have gotten hit. Like, yeah, we going to this nigga crib because he got the fresh, you know what I mean? So, but dandelion grows everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like we're throwing pounds and pounds, like tons of it in the trash. Um, uh, queen, this, it's just, just too many of them to go through. Like there's, there's literally a dozen or more medicinal plants that grows in everybody's property. And we pee on it. We let our dogs walk on it, shit on it. Like it's in central parks, the park, wherever you at, wherever you got grass at, them weeds is medicinal plants. So, you know, people will just stop doing, you know, people will stop violating, you know, and, and start using when them. When you say that, it, and it makes me think, so if we understand the, a war mindset of where we live at, and if the natural things we pesticide, then the synthetic things, think about the synthetic things is what's sold at the Home Depots and in the lawn care. So they sell us things so we can fill our yard with that. And then they take away the actual medicinal things and have us fighting the medicinal things. So we're fighting against what to cure us. Boy, we've been trained. That's that's all facts. That's a good summary. When I when I found out, it was mind blowing to me, because I realized that, like, I'm going down to the damn spot to buy shit that I just threw away at the house. Like, you you know how insane niggas look? They online looking for detoxes. They throwing away hundred pounds of detox every fucking summer. Like you pull a, you pulling. You're pulling enough fucking detox and herbs out of your own grass and spraying that bullshit on there, which you could have supplied your whole family with for 12 months every year without any growing care. You don't even have to learn to grow. All these niggas talk about learn how to grow your shit and all that. You don't have to learn how to grow none of that. The lightning is going to hit. And every time lightning hits, lightning breaks up the nitrogen in the air, produces the nitrates for the fucking soil and the shit's gonna grow like clockwork. You you gotta, you have to kill that shit off to stop it from growing. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit grows like crazy. You know what I'm saying? The mosses, the algaes, all that shit's out there. You know what I'm saying? If you go in the Caribbean, the fucking sea moss is all along the coastline. This just, just people out there putting it in garbage bags, selling it on Amazon. Like it's, it's there, it's, it's coming out of the ocean. There's no limit to it. You know what I'm saying? So. It's just a matter of people figuring out we need to get in the game. You know what I'm saying? But we we have so many people that either like they they don't put resources up, you know what I'm saying? They they wanna they wanna win a fight that they're not in. Like, bro, how where the fuck you learn to do that at? You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you can't win a fight, you're not, oh I, I don't vote. Wait, what? What the fuck you mean you don't vote? How the fuck we gonna why are we gonna whoop a nigga ass if you don't throw a punch? I'm like, what what where the fuck who What's happening right now? Like, we got to get in the game. You know what I'm saying? We got to we gotta start this shit up. Like, okay, we're going to get resistance. We're going to get pushed back. We're going to get shit on. We're going to get overlooked. We gonna, all that's going to happen. But we got to get in the game and let all that happen so we can overcome it and get to where we need to get to. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got docile. Like, I don't know where that came in at. You know what I'm saying? We just super docile with it. Like, water. I, I know two places <laughs> we could get in the game at. Um, and if we actually develop something that we could put in or whether we have it of uh, like people put in finances, but one is for hair growth. The sisters, if we could, ju- if we can get a product for hair growth and, and naturally stimulate the sisters hair growth or just hair growth period, then that money that goes to bro, the beauty supply will bro, start to go back, wrap right back in. Well, I've had one of those products that's super successful for almost 10 years and I know probably 15 other people that have amazing hair like that's that's not a thing bro that's that's not a thing here's the thing we need we mm-hmm. need legislation see that's we got we're we're at the ceiling of underground 
we we can't we can't go no further than we already went with underground with YouTube little website. Oh, you got your website? Okay, yeah, go to my website. This shit is small peanut shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we got to hit the mainstream. We got to be. What are on, what are some? We got to look when Coca Cola commercial come off. My shit got to come on. You know what I'm saying? At the Super Bowl, Heineken doing they shit. I got to come on behind the Heineken shit with the Seymour. But the the, he, the commercial with the Super Bowl cost five ten million dollars, twenty million dollars. So it's a matter of how fucking bad do we want this shit? You know what I'm saying? Can we put together 20 fucking million so that at the fucking Super Bowl, when they run into Heineken commercials and all of the other goofball shit, there's a there's a herbal, you know, uh, you know, hair, natural, whatever the fuck, some shit that represents us in that mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. And you know what I, you know what I think, you know what I think, Dr. Inky? A lot of people, a lot of us are waking up, but what I'm what I'm thinking is. The way we grew up is eating bad stuff, drinking bad stuff. That's how we know. You know what I mean? Nah, but we know we, so know, where, how where they, Listen, so, we know how to get money. Yeah, we know how to get money, but we we don't teach that's all we don't teach nothing positive. No, we no, get no. our no. money and I got all mine. We need and to do do is start focusing. All we need to do is take it back to the old school where we understood that success was not about having money it was about what you did with your money right right. so so now because the idea is we got this idea of like unity which means that we all supposed to work together at the same time and do the same thing no i don't need a fucking million niggas thinking they herbalists that shit dangerous it's niggas out here selling herbs fucking people up it's more people jamming people up making people sick selling niggas bullshit herbs then it is people that know what the fuck they doing because niggas think, oh, look at Inky. Inky is a nigga from the neighborhood. He go to all. So he, he, you know, I could just, shit, I could Google up some shit real quick and I could, I could be the same. Like, nah, nigga, I spent 30 fucking eight years studying this shit. You can't, you can't come behind and do like, you, you, you know, stay over here and do what the fuck you do. Just support this. You know what I'm saying? Just put the bread up. You wherever the fuck you at. If you work at Walmart or you making a thousand dollars an hour in fucking technical NFT bullshit, or you selling crack, or you selling fucking pussy, or whatever you're doing, send the fucking money. You know what I'm saying? So that niggas doing the other shit, it's balance. I'm not telling niggas to stop doing what you're doing. Have balance. You know what I'm saying? And 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 make sure that we do the things that we want to see. We got too many millionaires and billionaires. What the fuck are you doing with a billion dollars? What are niggas doing with hundred million dollar fucking sneaker deals? Like, what the fuck are you doing with all of that money? How is it that you got all that money? You came out of the same fucking neighborhoods I came out of, and you ain't got a fucking day school, a day a daycare, a clinic, none of that shit yet. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Right. Because the idea is about having money is what equals success. So guess what? We don't realize that within that same model of success is stinginess. Because in order for me to put up the bread for some shit, in order for me to practice philanthropy, that means I have to give away some of what it means for me to be successful. So that means I got to come, I got to, I got to become unsuccessful almost to help out my community. Like, so, so the whole idea is counterintuitive. We got to get back to the point where we, we, you know, like, it's not about how much money you got, bro. It's about what you do with it, the impact you make. You know what I'm saying? Like, and other groups of people, they understand that. This is why when you go to colleges, universities, and some places, they got like a wing, you know, dedicated to the, the highest donator and family. Like, this is the Johnson wing over here. Then they got like a, maybe a statue out front with like a thousand names of people that done donated, you know, 20,000, 50,000 to the school, blah, blah, blah. So what we think a lot of times, like I said, is racism is not racism. It's just niggas is not doing for self. You know what I'm saying? If, if me, if, if us right now on this live, right, just hypothetically, if we put up the money to build a school with Umar, like let's use Umar, for example, if we all pull our money together, say we millionaires, we, we basketball players or football or some other group, you know, we, we NFT niggas or something. So we fund Umar school. Our children is supposed to be privileged up in that motherfucker. This ain't got nothing to do with race. Nigga, we pay for this bitch. Of course, our children are supposed to be treated than the rest of these motherfuckers. That is common sense. The moment that you think 
that your child and your ass ain't paid not near dollar. You ain't put up no fucking cement, not near bricks. You didn't build this motherfucker. Why the fuck would your children come in here and be treated the same as mine? That doesn't make any sense. I built this motherfucker. I own it. So of course my children's supposed to get lower prices. They both get an extra low. Yeah, that's how that goes. So when we live in, in the world where people is building their own shit and we're not, we literally are humming and bumming. Like we complaining that we don't have the equal rights as somebody else in their own house. Like that shit is insane. Nigga, if you come to my house, you got to do what I say. You can't do it as I do. That's just how it goes. You in my house. This is my shit. I pay for this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And my kids go run around this motherfucker buck naked and do whatever the fuck they do. But you coming in, you a guest. You gotta sit your ass in the living room, sit on the couch, take your shoes off. Like you gotta, you gotta. And we in everywhere like that. The thing is, we just gotta start funding shit. You know what I'm saying? And focusing in, like, yo, if you're gonna dedicate your life to study, cool. The niggas that dedicated their life to running and jumping, when you get the bag from running and jumping, nigga, that got to go to the niggas that study. You know what I'm saying? Because they got to put the blueprint together. And then from there, we got to send that money to the niggas that learned how to do masonry, electrician shit, and, and plumbing shit so they can build up the shit that the, the thinking niggas thought up. You know what I'm saying? The thinking niggas going to think of it. The building niggas got to build it. And we need our bag chasers to fund it. You know what I'm saying? Like we, That's unity. Unity is not everybody being a thinker or everybody being a bag chaser or everybody like, that shit is goofball shit. Everybody not supposed to be an entrepreneur. That don't even make sense. Everybody doesn't even have something in them to be an entrepreneur with. So that's why you go to conscious shit. You got a thousand niggas with shea butter, a thousand niggas with incense. Like, bro, what the fuck I'm going to do? Trade my incense with your incense? Like, nigga, that's not business. We need niggas that's coming up with unique shit. Like, I don't think everybody should even try to be an entrepreneur. Some motherfuckers should just be employees. You know what I'm saying? And stay a fucking employee until you come up with something unique. That's based on you, your your inner you, your passion, the, the gift that you have that makes it your shit totally different from everybody fucking else. Then you should be an entrepreneur at that point. Now, because you're going to have the discipline and the fortitude to last long enough and whatever that is to overcome all the obstacles. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing to success in business. How long can you go? How long can you start? How long can you eat Raymond noodles? How long can you rob Peter to pay Paul? Because that's what it takes to be successful as an entrepreneur. And if you're not passionate about whatever it is that you're doing, it's going to be a certain point where that shit is going to break you and you're just going to be tired of making the sacrifice. And you're like, ah, let me go back over here. Let me go back to doing this. Let me go back to the block. Let me go back to the job. That's what happened. No, you never were supposed to be fucking trying to entrepreneur shit in the first place. Nigga, let the motherfuckers that already figured themselves out work on that you know what i'm saying like it's just a lot of mental prioritizing you know what i'm saying like we got motherfuckers spending time looking for aliens like bro what the fuck are you doing looking for aliens my guy that shit just totally fucks me up niggas that have ufo conversations i'm like bro whether <laughs> whether ufos exist or not bro like you you not you don't have good relationships with your kids like, hold you know up inky, you're, inky you're hold up inky. with your mama i'm inky, like hold bro. up inky you name out the alien no, I'm not. Get it? Inky is an alien, ain't he? Nah, that's see, that's a lack of understanding of who we are as a people. As a people? Yeah. So Inky wasn't no alien? Oh, he, he was a uh, he, he who was Inky? Let's have this conversation and then we'll circle back to that. We can do this real quick. <laughs> it's this quick. It's quick. Where does iron come from? <clears throat> the earth. That will be incorrect. Iron does not come from the earth. Iron comes from stars. From uh, stars. Yeah. So, so your your blood, your that's very not. life force, is maintained by something that's not from this planet. White, yellow, brown, black, purple. Everybody. Everybody. Where does water come from? Come from space. That's right. It also comes from stars. Our body is also made up mostly of water. We water beings on a water planet. Correct. So everything about you is from outside of this planet. So we do. So, so when we say, so when we say alien, there's a component that means other, different, or foreign. That's a part of our identity crisis. We not understand it that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Inky, you know, that that that's we Inky is us. If we get back, if we even if we wanted to get deep into the story of them tablets, remember, Inky and his wife was trying to make mankind out of the monkeys that was here. They was trying to genetically upgrade the monkeys and they couldn't do it. They failed. So they actually had to start. Inky had to start having sex with, you know, Inky had to seed this planet himself with his own sperm, which is the reason why when the quote unquote other gods said that they wanted to flood the planet, he whispered to Noah like, man, fuck these niggas. Here's the blueprint, build a ship. When these niggas flood, don't worry, load up the motherfucking family on this here and <laughs> we'll figure this shit out later on. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that was his flesh and blood. You know what I'm saying? Like, so everything about us is not from here. Everything vital to our sustenance is not from earth. So again, it doesn't even make time, it make, doesn't even make sense for us to figure out who's in a ship floating around and all this other shit because we right here and we not, we not spending enough time on the relationships we got here. If aliens came to this motherfucker, they wouldn't fuck with us, even if they look black. Even if it was a black man and a black woman hopped out of alien ship, they wouldn't fuck with us because we don't fuck with our mamas. We don't fuck with our children. Our shit is crazy down this motherfucker. Our children killing each other. They killing themselves. Like they'll come down here. If, if aliens pulled up, the worst thing that could happen is that there'd be black and brown motherfuckers get off that ship because they would go to fuck off and kill us first. Why? Because we are, because we down here full of fucking cocaine and McDonald's. All right, let me ask you another question. I, I, I know your expertise a little bit. I did a little research on you. I'm still, you can answer this question. Definitely can. So, so what's up with the um, chromosome number two? What's up with the RH factor? But I'm saying, but this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Who put the caps on there? Who, who forget who put the caps on there? Who did the splicing? I ain't got into the splicing yet. You got to give me time. That's where you go. Forget the caps. Don't how how how, how can we how we how can we forget the caps? The splicing because the caps are less important than the splicing. What you believe that? I know I know that to be a fact. But it, it cuts off it cuts off our lifespan. It doesn't cut off the lifespan. It it maintains the lifespan. So do, that's like a heads versus tails perspective kind of thing. But why I tell you the splicing is more important is because the splicing is unnatural. I right, don't tell me no more. I want to research myself. Yeah. When you look at the two A and the two B, gene, gene splicing, natural. right? Well, the two A and two B is a spliced. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 spliced. Okay. So that's the thing. It's not only like who did it. But when did they do it? What tools did they use? What the fuck? Exactly. That's that what I'm talking about. Thousand years ago. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but if it's still, it, but you got to understand, if so, then so then why would we not be focused on on what we're eating? Why would we not be focused on exercising? Like, why would we not be focused on our genetic inheritance? The only thing of value that we know for sure. Like, the only thing that makes our ancestors even real is the fact that we have the DNA in our body to prove it. That is our real inheritance. Niggas be talking about generational wealth. Well, we building generational wealth. How are we doing that? Oh, we, we working with these stocks and bonds. No, the fuck you not, goofball. That's not generational wealth for you. That's generational wealth for the niggas that actually own those companies. That's not generational wealth for, for you. You making a few dollars riding the market up and then selling down and the trending. No, that money going with them. Generational wealth happens inside of your DNA. That's where generational wealth is stored. That's where your genius is stored. That's where your, your ambition is at. That's where your, your chromosomes are. That's going to provide you your day-to-day, -day, your socializing capability, how long you live on this motherfucker. Like we are, you, we're, we're creating a situation right now, like men, like we don't have the, we're losing the ability to reproduce and niggas like this not getting, it. I'm like, yo, Hey guys, listen, I'm working on making sure that we could stop doing IVF babies and purchasing fake penis implants and all this shit. Like you, you, what the fuck are we like? It's insane, bro. Like the only thing I could think of since now we in the mix of these, these ancient stories is the story of Noah. You know what I'm saying? I tell niggas, yo, at least the people in the Bible, they had a reason to doubt Noah. When Noah said, yo, I'm building the ship, a flood is coming. First things first, Noah was a wild nigga. 
Secondly, there was never a flood before. So they didn't have a reason to believe a flood was coming. Like, nigga, what are you talking about? There ain't no flood coming, nigga. Get your ass out of here. This motherfucker drunk again. Nowadays, though, I'm like, yo, the flood is coming. And guess what? Niggas is swimming up to their neck already in the water. Like, this nigga ain't keep bugging, bro. What the fuck is he talking about? The flood? I'm like, nigga, you, what do you mean? Nigga, you, you doggy paddling right now. What the fuck are we talking about? Like, we're making IVF babies. Like, women cannot make the babies. Men have fake fucking penises. Like, we, we can't go no further. We can't go no further. Like, in my mind, I should just wake up and there's like a, a billion dollars on my cash app. Like, my cash app should be broken. Like, it should be federal agents at my door. Like, bro, niggas tried to put $10 billion on your cash app. Uh, we, you know, we came to... We came to lock your ass. We, some, something got to be scared. You know, what the fuck are you, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this should be the, the most important thing fucking going on. This is more important than mass uh, shootings. This is more important than fucking NBA shit. It's more important than fertilizer for food. This is more important than all that shit. We, we, we have it like, the, the food crisis is a, is a perfect example. Yo, the plants is not able to reproduce. We need fertilizer. We gotta, we gotta mobilize. I'm like, bruh, we are not able to reproduce. What the fuck are you niggas thinking? Where is the global mobilization on that? But but from our research, we lead we lead um uh non-African nations are leading in um in reproducing. Nah, that's that's no no non sight for God. What you're doing is looking at a current number and you're not looking at the decline. It don't show the decline when I look at it. Exactly. That's my point. So if we're if we're not doing the number and taking into account, for instance, how many black babies was born in 1900 out of every 100 babies with autism compared uh, to the amount right now today? How many women are having hysterectomies today as opposed to a hundred years ago. Oh, it's more, it's more hysterectomies today. How many, how many women right now, think about this, we're in a nationwide crisis for uh, baby formula. And nobody breastfeed. No, 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 no. See, that's the wrong thing. See, we gotta, we gotta, see, inky, we gotta have an inky vision. That's the wrong, that's the wrong direction. The only way that there could be a nationwide crisis for baby formula is if there's already a nationwide crisis of women that are not able to breastfeed. Mm. So our women have lost the ability to produce fucking milk along with the ability to have a fucking baby out of their vagina. How many C-sections was happening a hundred years ago versus the C-sections today? Tell you the full we now. All of this shit. I love it. He talking about the he talking about the whole collective effect. Yeah, for we, a science, we for a science all the way up to now. Yeah, but we forgetting the coke when we say food. Like niggas pretend like when we have these conversations, everybody's automatically positive and nobody's getting hot. We're forgetting about the coke that we're doing. The niggas are snorting powder. These bitches are snorting powder. We're getting high as a motherfucker. Right, right. All of the fucking blunt raps. We're forgetting all the blunt raps. We're forgetting the Newports. Only black folks really support uh, fucking Newport cigarettes. Wow. Almost all the white folks that I know smoke fucking Marlboros and then other fucking weird cigarettes. Camels and shit like that. Right. So, like, we're, we're forgetting about we're propping up the fucking malt liquor business, the Newport fucking business. We're forgetting all the fucking McDonald's and all this other goofy shit. When you go into the fucking other neighborhoods, do you know they got other types of fat? The motherfuckers ain't got those as much as McDonald's. The niggas got Zaxby's and other yeah. kind of shit. Over there. It's, it's not the same. It's not the same. You know what sure. I'm saying? All of the, the Zanny bars and, you know, the, the lean sipping and all the shit that we, we, we just like, we just, we had these conversations. Oh, well, you know, we got to work on our diet. Nigga, we all getting high as a yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Popping pills, niggas drinking night quill, niggas, motherfuckers is feeding their babies night quill at night to put them to sleep. Yeah, for 
Right. Like, like this is the shit that we got to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers is getting hot. Let me tell you, one day I was in Philly. Shit fucked me up. Because I'm online. I'm waiting to get a, a falafel from the, the Arab, you know, little trucks and shit. Sister behind me, because me and homeboy, we kicking in about a whole bunch of shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm just bullshitting, really, just hogging up the line. So sister behind me, she, you know, she pregnant. She's like, I'm hungry. I got to get woo woo. I'm waiting for the bus over there. Woo woo. I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for the bus too. All right, but good. Sis, order your shit. You know, woo woo. So she ordered her shit. So now we got a little fake little introduction and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we get back to the bus stop, making a long story short. She starts smoking cigarettes. She put out her Newport. She gone. I'm like, sis, I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't say, why are you, you know, you pregnant? You smoking cigarettes. Like, oh, well, the doctor said, you know, this don't affect your baby. I said, hold on. How the fuck can the doctor tell you that smoking cigarettes don't affect your baby um, when everything in your body is, is you sharing it with the baby? Like, mm. how, what the fuck? Like, this, this is no, like, so we forgetting all them cigarettes. We forgetting that we created a culture amongst our women only where you could get the green light to eat any fucking pure fuckery you want when you're pregnant. Oh, I need Chinese food with ice cream, with pickles in it, with like, with Pepsi, with like, what the fuck are we doing? That's, is this what we're building our babies out of? That's why the fuck they retarded. That's yeah. why they fucking, in the video, you know, I gotta give me a Draco, kill a nigga, all that shit tonight. Motherfucker, I kill a nigga, make sure this shit is right. Got the Draco, got my pole. Fuck that, I'm gonna take your soul. Like, what the fuck are we doing? That's because these bitches was pregnant and loaded these motherfuckers up with Laffy Taffy's. You're getting high with your baby mama while she's pregnant. You're passing the blunt. You got me. What the fuck are we like? Come with. We have, this is us. We killing us. Ain't no fucking white folks doing it. We killing us. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's fucking paying attention no more. We on autopilot. We killing us. Let's get hey, the Inky. Hey, can I, Inky? I'm for real. Let me ask Go you. Ahead. Uh, let's get back to generational wealth real quick. How does somebody uh, find their own happiness? <sighs> well, I think it's a thing of passion. I think it's a thing of I would I would say because I'm somebody who spends a lot of time and money fucking around. Um, you know, I did the I did the DNA shit. I did the. The, uh, what's that old shit on the, the internet where you type in your family name and they'll take you up, you know, Ancestry. I did that. I spent, um, I spent a few years with my sister primarily. Um, she was rocking and rolling on her side. I was rocking and rolling on my side. Then we came together and shared results, like going through the family. Like, so I put a lot of time in going through it a variety of different ways. Cause, um, the DNA tests are a lot less accurate than, um, than people think, you know what I'm saying? So, because a lot of times there's stuff in your DNA, but we don't take into consideration horizontal gene transfer, how much stuff is in our DNA just by proximity. Um, and then how many, how many things are, are a part of your actual family structure, right? So say for instance, right now, right? Um, Maybe you might go out and you have a baby with a, um, let's say a Mexican lady, right? But your child is raised with your family, blah, blah, blah. Like five or six generations later, your, your people want to know what's what and whatever. You know, so now they test and they say, oh, well, we got some Mexican over here. We got some German over here. We got some French over Like, come on, bro. We done went through this little 400 year transition period where we was getting raped and passed around and handed around. Like we can't go with like that, that, that DNA thing is that's, that's, that's like a mockery in a sense, almost, you know what I'm saying? And then if you go back a few thousand years before that, instead of being the rape, the rapey, we were the rapist, you know what I'm saying? And we was, we was wilding out here, spreading our seeds all over the place when we was conquering shit. So like we gotta get, we gotta use the DNA shit, but then we gotta juxta, we gotta put that in juxtaposition to culture, and we gotta do the other things. We gotta find our family trees. We gotta get back with our elders and our old folks. Sit down with grandma, 
have her, you know, write that shit down or use write record your grandma right now. Like, like ask grandma if that's the oldest or great grandma, or if you can find a great, great, which is rare today, sit down with them and get everything they fucking remember. Everything. Like how, who did you meet? Did you meet your, get to your great, 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 grand, whoever's the oldest person in your family and ask them who was the oldest family members they knew and what they, you know, where they was from. Because I found out some wild shit. You know what I'm saying? I found out we had some white folks, even from Jamaica. You know what I'm saying? My family from Jamaica, we had white folks that made the red, the red stripe beer. You know what I'm saying? So I got, I got I, my, part of my bloodline go back to motherfuckers that made red stripe. And that's white folks. You know what I'm saying? So um, you just find out shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but you got to use shit to put it all in context. So the DNA shit is cool, but you got to have living libraries to really put that shit in context. You know what I'm saying? So um, I would say use all them things and be aggressive. But if you don't really have a purpose and it's just curiosity, I don't think you're going to really be able to really do it thoroughly because it's going to cost you some money and some time, you know what I'm saying, to really do it. So I, you got to have like a reason, you know what I'm saying? I think I was driving for is like my dad passed away and he had told us a few things that we wanted to really like, you know what I'm saying? Carry that out. So time and money was just, you know, we was, we was going to get it done regardless. You know what I'm saying? But um, you got to really have an end game to that because there's a point where, you know, epigenetics is, is everything. So we want to make sure that we're passing down even if we can't figure out our yesterday, you know what I'm saying? We gotta, we gotta focus on the, what we're passing down right now. And epigenetics is literally the genetic memory of how you live, which now becomes genetic information for your babies. You know what I'm saying? So when we doing our thing and we out and about and we don't even plan babies. So we literally meet and joins in the club you know, we come and we go and we take, you know, we knocking them down a few months, bop, bop, bop. Oh, you pregnant. All right, cool. You, yeah, I, I meant you. All right, well, let's fuck it. Let's have a baby. Or maybe you don't want to do it, but she said you is. Oh, shit, baby is coming. She making decisions. You ain't got no motherfucking decision power. And, you know, now we got babies. You know what I'm saying? Like, and what's in the baby? The, the, the vodka, the powder, the, the, the blunt wraps, the, the, the pills, the lean. The, I mean, we, we, all this shit is passing down to our babies. So it's not possible for these motherfuckers. Then what we do after we have these babies and they filled up, we done fucked up our epigenetics. You know what I'm saying? Then we have the babies and what we feed these motherfuckers in the morning. Either they get no breakfast or they get pop tarts and frosty flakes and all this other goofy shit that shut their fucking brain down. You know what I'm saying? And we feed them cow's milk and dairy, which is loaded with casomorphine. So they have a predisposition now for morphine so it's no wonder, like for me, it's no wonder that we have a heroin epidemic because we all on dairy products, mm -hmm. which means that we all been having morphine since we was little. So now you in your teenage years, you know, you've been on, you need a stronger amount of it. To, like it's, we, listen, this shit is all suicidal. This, we, we practice in our own genocide. You know what I'm saying? Like this, you know, it's us. And, and, and I jump in right there. Just, it, it starts with just like, yo, who's doing this work? Let's get behind it. You know what I'm saying? And let's, let's, you know, let's get focused. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, this should be doing July 10th. You know what I'm saying? Like that's going to be a monumental game changing thing. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, honestly, the thing I'm looking forward to my dad, it might just be the hater in me. Cause I'm from the Bronx. We, we hate, that's just a part of who we are. You know, that's what we do. We hate and play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's a Bronx thing. You know what I'm saying? That's why we created rap, so we could laugh at other niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was the origin of rap. You know what I'm saying? I'm the flyest nigga. Y'all niggas ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? That's literally the essence of rap starting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want all the women to look at me. I'm the flyest nigga in here. Y'all, who the fuck y'all niggas? Then fuck that y'all niggas ain't. That's rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it started. I, I'm the flyest nigga out. Y'all niggas is wacker than me. So, yeah, I, I should be the star. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we got to we gotta understand this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's it, it's just insanity, bro. We, quick, we killing ourselves. Quick. We not really before you go, insane. Banger, before you go, Banger, you got it right after this. Uh, break down July 10th. 
a real a quick synopsis. What's July tenth? Okay, so um, yeah. got it banging after that. the quickest way, I guess, is just to tell the kind of tell the story how it how it came about. So it's two two sides to the story. Um, so the one side is, you know, I've been doing a forty day fast, doing my live research on humans, you know, for yes, about sir. ten years. So, you know, at some point you gotta stop and collate your information and, and, and you know bring it you know bring it full circle and so I made the discoveries that you know is is you know it, in my mind I made the discoveries necessary to end diabetes you know what I'm saying but niggas always think they got some high power shit you know what I'm saying like that's kind of the essence of you know that's also a part of hip hop is a certain level of overconfidence and cockiness and arrogance you know what I'm saying but once I put it out there people that are credentialed, people that are at the level to really critically evaluate the article was like, eh, hold on. Who's this nigga? Because this right here is a, uh, yeah, we think this might actually be exactly what the fuck he said it is. We need to, so that's a sidebar story. Now, the other side of the story is about 10 years ago, somewhere in that space, um, I'm in the National Black Theater. Um, I'm a vendor. I'm not even, I don't know what the fuck was going on that day. It might've been a, a lecture. It might've been a nighttime class, whatever, but it wasn't mine. I was just on the side, you know, with my table set up, selling my uh, books and, you know, my little products and all that. So brother walks up to me, you know, kind of super cocky with it and shit. And he like, yo, you know, I don't really fuck with none of this conscious shit. So I'm like, right off the back, my antenna's up. I don't even know where this shit get ready to go. You know what I'm saying? He like, y'all don't fuck with none of this conscious shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, be a lot of fake niggas and that. Nah, nah, niggas ain't getting no money. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? I keep my new BMW every tip button. So he going into, <laughs> like, brother. So, you know, so he like, well, listen. My mom, they just told my mom, you know, that she got, you know, X amount of weeks to live. You know, um, she she's you know she might as well go into a hospice and kind of wrap it up and woo woo woo. You know, she got sarcoidosis, and um, you know, so you know I've been watching y'all online. You you know, I kind of identify with you the most. So you know, you know, I want to see if you could you really who you say you is. Can you do what you say you do? You know what I'm saying? So you know, we'll do anything. You know what I'm saying? And um, so we I started to work with him. You know. Long story short, I got his mom together, you know what I'm saying? And he had said, like, if, you know, I love my mother, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you can, if you can give me back my mom's, like, I'm going to turn into your disciple. Like, I'm going to promote this all over the world. And woo -woo. now you, in my position, you hear that a lot, you know what I'm saying? But niggas, you know, we don't, we don't really, our word doesn't really have a high value, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so I wasn't really expecting anything from it. You know what I'm saying? This is what I do. This is my shit. You know what I'm saying? This would this God, you know, this come through me, not from me. You know what I'm saying? So I got to do this regardless. Um, so I wasn't expecting nothing from it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but maybe a friend or, you know, I, I got a new comrade out there. You know what I'm saying? Good, good, you know, good brother, whatever the case may be. Um, which is always more valuable than money. Let me just add that to fucking a fucking solid nigga is more valuable than a fucking billion dollars. Hash, you know, that sidebar. Um, but anyway, so he was dead serious though. So he stopped doing everything he was doing and opened up a juice bar, like upstate New York somewhere. He, he said, opened up a juice bar, like, yo, I'm about to sell, open up the juice bar. You're gonna make the formulas. You're gonna tell me what juices to make, the smoothies to make. I'm gonna have your products in there, your books in there. Like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be you up here. And so, my man had the deed. He showed me the joint. He like, yo, this is it. I'm about to get the. And so, fast forward, he did everything he said he was going to do and more. So he gets the juice bar open. This is way before Styles P and all this other shit. He gets the shit cracking. He um. And he starts going into the schools, you know, for free. You know, he's just going into the elementary schools, making contacts, you know, like, yo, I want to teach the kids health, you know, help get everybody healthy and active. And fast forward, he done spread the information so crazy. He up there changing lives, saving lives, 
the folks up there done voted him in as a city councilman now based on how much healing and, and work that he did on his own time. He became city councilman. So now bring back to the article when the article is doing his laps, I don't know what he's exactly working on. You know what I'm saying? But he was already like trying to get the city people to get with us and work on some larger project. You know what I'm saying? But I guess, you know, I'm just a, you know, gold teeth. You know, like it's it's limited when you when you try to get them people, when you show them the information, they go, oh my God, that's insane. That's genius. We gotta get behind that. We gotta, this is what we need to get the nationwide, you know, we need to, we need to, this is a nationwide mission. The moment they go, yeah, but he, you know, that guy right there wrote it. He'd be like, what? Him? The, 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 with the gold teeth with the, huh? We can't, that's, that's, that can't be, that, that can't be right. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that can't be right. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but, but it is though, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, you know, the people want to, um, you know, they, they want to put together at least a pilot flagship clinic for you. They want to build you a clinic, bro. You know, we got to put, you know, like multi-million dollar facility. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll be a medical holistic facility. You know what I'm saying? We're, you know, we'll, we'll you know, see how we can change the health, you know, and, um, but, you know, first they need a, they need the inky experience and they need to see that the people want this. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's why we wound up in the Paramount Hudson, you know, the Paramount Hudson Valley theater, like a real box office spot. You know what I'm saying? So if we sell out the tickets there, you know what I'm saying? Not only does that, you know, check the boxes that we need to check to, to pass some of the legislation. And, you know, we got the mayor and the governor and all these other people involved. They, they already coming out. Like I'm getting more support from the niggas that's supposed to be the ops than the motherfuckers that's supposed to be woke, conscious, and holistic. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they, they already on deck, you know what I'm saying? The New York mayor, he already running around telling everybody he got rid of his diabetes going vegan. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but so the flip side to it is because it's a box office place, you know, we could set a precedent where we could change even the culture of entertainment. Because when you get into the culture of entertainment, like people are like, oh, well, you know, the drill music and this, that, and other, and blah, blah, blah. Problem is nobody else ain't demonstrate that they could sell out no shows, right? Because that's at a level, that's all they care about. You know what I'm saying? Like, can you sell out a thousand seat arena? Can you then go to a 5,000? Because if you could sell out a thousand, we'll trust you and put you in a spot where there's 3,000 seats. You know what I'm saying? You could sell out the 3,000 seats. We put you at the Madison Square Garden. You know what I'm saying? Like, because people don't really care. The people that own the marinas, they don't give a fuck whether you come up there and say, kill everybody in your house, your mama, your, or if you go up there and sing, we are the world for fucking three hours. They don't give a fuck as long as you sold the tickets. <laughs> so, you know, it's a way that we can do, you know, we can we can kill like multiple birds with one stone. You know what I'm saying? In terms of changing the entertainment, in terms of getting people to work together. And Democrats and Republicans is sponsoring this shit. You know what I'm saying? I got ex ex Crips, ex Bloods. Like it's behind this, promoting and sponsoring this shit. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm looking around, I'm like, hold on. So you telling me I got blood niggas, I got crip niggas, I got niggas that's in, oh, that used to be in Spanish. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I got Democrats, I got Republicans, I got all these motherfuckers that's coming together to support an event to change the health of young black children, young black families, except for the young black children and the young black families. I, so everybody's participating, but but the people who should be participating the most, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I got, you know, I got a shout out, you know, I got a shout out, uh, child support is fraud. I got a shout out, fly trap gumbo. I got a shout out, fit for life, personal trainers. I got a shout out, do the knowledge radio. I got a shout out, uh, young Sabi out there, Victor Bowman. 
You know what I'm saying? Mr. G photos, lunchtime with Anna, Marvin. I got a shout out to Melanin Diabetes Research Industry, and I got a shout out to Mind Plug Academy. You know, so far, these are the folks that's like, yo, we, we don't mind sponsoring. You know what I'm saying? Like, we push the buck forward. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, I got some Republicans. I got some Democrats that are all sponsoring. Like, yo, we want to see this happen. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, um, a part of me is more excited for the event to happen just so that I could raise hell and terrorize the motherfuckers who did not participate. <laughs> Ow! I cannot, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm literally day by day. I'm more interested in taking note of who's not participating than who is. Because uh, you will not get to ride this motherfucking ship into the motherfucking next wave. I will be... Uh, you, you didn't support. No, no, no. You, you, your name's not on my cash app. Your name is not in the... Uh, you, you didn't buy a ticket. You didn't send any money. No, you, you're not a part of this movement. You know what I'm saying? So you will and forever that's what I was be gonna ask. Nigga, Because I remember... I remember being a child asking my dad like yo you from harlem like yo what was you doing when malcolm x and them was moving around was you with that like was you a part like dad you wasn't you know what i'm saying was you where was you at when that shit was so best believe in 50 years people's children gonna be asking hey you you wasn't with inky with the you where was you at when so uh, so just just saying that where was you at when Inky was revolutionizing healthcare? Would you you wasn't there? You didn't. Oh, I get it. You was part of them niggas that was saying y'all was mad with Inky because he was talking about your, your best. You you was happy with this nigga and that, or you you was mad you your Inky had gold teeth. You was coming up with all these fucking crazy goofball shit in your mind that blocked you from actually supporting your children and your children's children because this shit ain't about me. This shit is about our babies and our babies' babies and our ability to continue to make babies. We have an I between IVF and vitro fertilization fucking pills, not just the IVF process, but the pills motherfuckers is popping. The fake penises, the inability to make breast milk, like we're losing the ability to reproduce out this bitch. And niggas are still playing. So I got to I got to just ask like yo did you spend more money on fast food in 2022 than you did on melanin research? Did you spend more money on blunt wraps this year than you did on melanin research? If you did, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your ancestors rolling over in a grave. Period. We don't give a fuck about how much videos niggas making online. How much time did you put in offline to this shit? How much money did you put in offline to this shit if not then you playing and we in a space where we we shouldn't be playing period you know what i'm saying Kyrie Irving is the only real one out there that that i see that's that's actually trying to you know like yo i'm i'm really trying to do something with this bag like what's up you know what i'm saying like what, what what's what's happening out there what y'all got going on you know what i'm saying like but we got all the, and I mean, of course, LeBron did a school thing. Jalen Rose did a school, but you know, it's like, okay, that's, that's cool. I, I could respect a school, but outside of that, we got too many guys running around here doing that. Got nothing. You got, you got more money you spent on gas this year. You spent more money on gas than you did research in your epigenetics. Like it's, I just like we, that all that, all that's the real deal. Like we're not putting in no real work. You know what I'm saying? My adopted uncle, Gil Scott Heron, I only met him when he was old and sickly. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we had, that's a long story, but I got to sit down with him and ask him, you, you, you know, that's, I, my, I got one track mind. I'm like, hold the fuck up. I'm about, to, I'm about to go, I'm about to sit down with who? You know what I'm saying? Like, so if the revolution is not going to be televised, where does the revolution take place? That's good. Revolution take place in your mind. From there, that set me on a crash course to reprioritize what I thought of was the science of the body. Immediately, I started to spend more time studying the heart and the brain and neurochemistry than, than anything else. Diet, you know what I'm saying? So these niggas is, 
you know, maybe they, they spend a lot of time studying herbs or, or you know, meat and kale, but my guy, it's, it's, your body is a lot more complex than that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's neurochemistry, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's where, you know, circling all the way back around to diabetes, that's, that's what the revolutionary thing and I found about, about diabetes is it has much more to do with your neurochemistry than anything else. And particularly the thing that governs it is your melanin hormones. It's a part of the melanin system. Melanin stimulating hormone, melanin concentrating hormone. Those are the guys that regulate your blood sugars. So when your melanin system is out of sync or out of whack, or, you know, that's when all kinds of other shit go on. But if you don't understand, that's where the root of the problem is. The problem never gets fixed. So there's not one human on this earth to this day that has ever been healed of diabetes by insulin. Because insulin does not metabolize or help your body metabolize blood sugar. If anything, insulin helps your body store blood sugar because insulin is something that helps you gain weight. It's a weight gain, makes you big. Bodybuilders inject it, you know what I'm saying? Because insulin and IGF-1 help you get bigger. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're getting fat or whether you're getting muscular, you know what I'm saying? So this shit is like, you know, blind leading the blind. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you just got to come off that fucking bread. That's big. Your thing or what you got? I was going to say, um, because he had made a point with rap music, right? Yeah. You said uh, you from the Bronx? Yes, sir. So rap came from the Bronx, right? So the Bronx would be considered the village. Yeah. And if we know, or we all know that it takes a village to raise a child. And if we take that child as this thing that you're doing or your mission, who's that village that's helping you raise this child? Because the child could be a thought, not just an actual child itself. Now, who's you, that village that's helping you raise that child? The people that get off their asses and open up their wallets and put their elbow grease in and the, the door is open. Like, hey, I, I recruit motherfuckers to the village every day. You know what I'm saying? But we will have our victory lap, the people in the village. And we will be laughing at the motherfuckers outside the village. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, if situation happens, you know, like it already has, you know what I'm saying? The information is now locked off because I'm no longer publicly on YouTube. So the shit that I teach now, it's not, it's not, it's not public. You know what I'm saying? Niggas didn't take advantage of it when it was there. So now it's behind the paywall. You got to sign up patreon.com forward slash Dr. Inky to get the information. You know what I'm saying? You got to participate. Cause I, I need, I need bricks. I need cement. Like we got to build this building. We got to build this ship. We got to put this Noah shit. Like we got to build this motherfucker. We got to build our way out of this situation. We supposed to be master builders. What the fuck are we going to build when we ain't got no cement, no bricks? You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm with motherfuckers that have do time to donate and motherfuckers that got money to donate. Motherfuckers that don't want to donate. You don't want to get busy. You don't want to put no bread up or put no time up. You just want to watch and hear about shit. Okay, cool. That's fine. You'll just watch and hear about shit. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like an NBA game. You just get to see the niggas win the championship. You don't get to hold the trophy or benefit, though. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's hey, weird. Give, give out to Cash App. Uh, cash App, dollar sign, minister. You know what I'm saying? And if we have any folks that want to make, like, larger donations... You could definitely email us at melanin versus diabetes at gmail.com. And then we can, you know, set it up, give you the uh, nonprofit information so you can, you know, make your larger contribution the proper way and, and do it like that with the nonprofit shit. Oh, coming to Atlanta. Hmm? That's what's up. When you coming to Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a single dad with five babies. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm on my way to Atlanta as soon as somebody put that bread. See, we back to that bread again. You know what I'm saying? As soon as somebody book book, book a venue, book some plane tickets and whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? But until then, you know what I'm saying? KT down there, Victor down there, Amun down there, Amsu down there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah I, I, I saw Amun. KT at the Malcolm X Fest. Yeah, Amun and Amsu is my students, man. I'm so like that, like I'm so proud of them. You know what I'm saying? Like that's those are my guys. Salute. You know what I'm saying? Nah, 
Tell us about the 40 day, uh, 40 day. Amun is, and you know, Amun, Amun is, wait, you know, Amun is 21 Savage Father. What? Oh, yeah. No, no, Dr. Amsu, excuse me. Amsu is, is 21 Savage oh, Father. I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. But they partners. They, well, they used to be partners. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, that's 21 Savage Father. You know what I'm saying? So that's like people just, and the reason why I'm saying it like that is because people don't understand how far the information goes. I did not know. When I met Amsu and Amun together, these was just the brothers from fucking overseas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like bringing us into Atlanta to do lectures and shit. You know what I'm saying? And they just stuck with it. They start buying the books and they took it to another level. Like, yo, we want to, you know, we got some ideas from some formulas. We want to run past you. And they start telling me what they wanted to do. I was like, yeah, that's just sound crazy. I wish I had the time to dedicate. You know what I'm saying? They was like, yo, we want to dedicate our time only to vaginas. I was like, y'all niggas already it's fucking insane. It was like, nah, we want to master, you know, we want to specialize in like fibroids and cysts and, you know, like they did it. You know what I'm saying? They was coming up with like pure genius fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't find out two years later, like this 21 Savage Father. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this is how, this is how valuable it is, you know, when you, when you, you don't understand the domino effect, you know what I'm saying? So it's not only when you fund you know, like when you, when you contribute to this, you don't know how many, how echo, you know, how it echoes, you know what I'm saying? Like, so. You uh, tell us about the 40 day juice fast. Uh, the 40 day fruit fast, we getting ready to start up in June. Hold on. Hold on one second. Peace God, what you got going on? Um, I'm live. I'm about to finish a live stream right now. And then, um, what you got going on? Got good editing to you. Don't worry about it. All right. We, we've been on, yeah, we've been on for a couple hours already, about an hour and a half. So we wrapping up. Yep. Sooner than that, maybe. Yeah. But right in that space. Definitely no longer. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah, got some got some brothers right there from you know some 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 brothers that's you know that's like oh we gotta have this meeting and talk about the you know so that's that's you, know, you had mentioned not to cut you off but you had mentioned some products that you said that was good that promotes hair hair growth. Would you mind giving those out or would you want to back channel or do you have them or do you sure. sell them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a, um, it's called Purple Phase. It's on my website. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yep. And then, um, I mean, it's a few other slow pieces, but the Purple Phase is, is real powerful for that. You know what I'm saying? F A Z? Purple Phase, yep. F A Z E. All right. No, no, no. P H A Z E. Oh, P. Yeah, it's melanogenic. You know what I'm saying? So it stimulates the melanogenesis and that, that stimulates the follicles and the scalp and the hair villi at the roots and, you know, the, uh, the glycoproteins that, that stimulate the, 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 the growth factors and all that kind of goodness. And is it uh, uh, like something for external or internal? Uh, it's internal. Mm. And now kidney, you have mentioned your kidneys and your bone marrow have a lot more to do with your hair growth than like rubbing shit on your scalp. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's where the things that stimulate the growth come from. You know what I'm saying? And then your neurochemistry. You know what I'm saying? So balancing luteinizing hormone and progesterone and DHEA and you know a lot of a lot of niggas going vegan. But they all deficient in saturated fat. Because <laughs> they don't know what the fuck they're doing. You know what I'm saying? So um, they don't have enough cholesterol in their body to produce enough vitamin D, testosterone, and all these other things they need. You just get, you get crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the 40 day fast, we're going to start up in June. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's primarily going to be mostly, I guess, just the people that subscribe to my Patreon. Um, but we're going to do that right up into the summit. You know what I'm saying? Because with the, with subscribing to my Patreon, whether you tier one, tier two, or tier three, um, is unlimited daily consultations with me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm literally um, through Patreon you know, like each person 
on they, you know, every, I'm on everybody's shit all day. You know what I'm saying? What you eat and how you exercise and what you take and blah, 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 to help everybody get to what their goal is, whether that goal is, you know, dealing with an illness, getting your fertility back, making sure your penis get hard, making sure your, your, you know, the ladies can have orgasms, um, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Or just looking better for the summertime. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. That's the that's that's a part of it. that's one of the perks. It's like it's not just you come to watch videos. Like it's I'm gonna grab your hand. You know what I'm saying? And whatever your shit is, we're going to walk together towards that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want people to be like long term supporters of mine. That's either looking skinny and frail or niggas is looking flabby and fat. You know what I'm saying? Like nah. If you out there telling motherfuckers that you've been following me for a long time, they should be able to see it on site on the walk up you know what i'm saying you should be looking like vibrant and healthy your penis should be working your vagina should be working all your shit should be working you know what i'm saying how the fuck is you following me and your ass look like you one cheeseburger away from the fucking emergency room that that ain't it you clearly not really following me. <laughs> uh, give out to your website um Nah, I'm, I'm, you know what? Patreon.com forward slash Dr. Inky, man. I'm more, I'm more interested in people getting this information than spending money with me at this point for products. You know what I'm saying? The information is more important. You know what I'm saying? I literally had a fight today with a guy. It's just crazy because he ordered a consultation. And so we fighting uh, on the consultation because he tried to tell me, like, listen, man, I don't need to give you all my information or what's going on with me. I just really wanted to have this consultation so you could tell me what to buy. I'm like, bro, I don't function like that. You need to send me some paperwork where I could see what you got going on with you before I tell you exactly what to buy or I'll just be making up shit to sell you some shit. That's, you look, you got the wrong nigga for that. You're like, bro, I pay you whatever. I'm like, okay, you not clearly not understanding. Your money is no good, brother. This is not, I don't, this is not what I do. This, I need, I change lives, my nigga. I, I could sell crack if I wanted to just, if it was about making money, nigga, I could still, I can go back to my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this not, this ain't that. I mean, I need money for my kids, my lights, my bills and shit like that. But I'm, I, my thing, I need, I, I, I'm here to heal people. You know what I'm saying? So I need to know what's wrong with you before I, you know what I'm saying? Tell you what and you need. And, and some of the things that you may need, I may not even have. I may have to send you some other nigga or send your ass online or something somewhere. Like I need to know what's wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? To, so I can you know, accurately get you well. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what the fuck we trying to do. Get niggas well. So, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, the information is the most important thing. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, just having me and, and the other people, you know what I mean? To support you through whatever your transition is. You know what I'm saying? Like, so many people that's gonna have Alzheimer's in the next 10 years, bro. This shit is insane. Everybody, everybody that just been blowing them cigars, them blunt wraps, it's over. It's too late. You switching the joints. Niggas switching the joint paper after 25 years of blunt wraps every day. Niggas getting vegan, you know, that vegan hemp shit now. Right? Nigga, you didn't smoke games, backwoods, white owls, Garcia Vegas for 20 fucking years. And you think like that Alzheimer's is on niggas. That shit on set already. Niggas just don't even know. They 15, 20 years into Alzheimer's already. And, you know, the shameful thing is that modern medicine does not have anything to help you. And guess what, guys? Drum roll, please. Neither do the fucking herbal niggas. Once the Alzheimer's got a grip on your fucking brain, it's over. You got to fight the Alzheimer's before it set in fully. So this is niggas window. While your shit's still working, you got to fight Alzheimer's now. Because once it reached that threshold where the tau proteins and the plaques done overrid the brain cells, oh, it's no coming back. It's over. Your shit gone. You know what I'm saying? At that point, you just manage until you dead. You know what I'm saying? No fix. You know? And science and, you know, 
multi-level corporations, they understand that we're getting to a space where we're getting ready to extend lifespan. We're getting ready to have a 150 year lifespan, 120 year lifespan. And when you, when you understand that, you understand what's going on around the globe now is about reducing <laughs> the population um, because the next group of people is going to live twice as long as the people now. So they want to try to get half of these motherfuckers up off of here. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, the way I was raised, you know, real niggas is tough niggas, not stupid niggas. And tough niggas fight. So, you know, I don't know about everybody else, but guess what? I plan on being in this motherfucking number. When niggas extend lifespan to 140, I plan on being right here, still fucking at 120. I plan on still getting some pussy at 100. Period. We'll figure that money shit out later. You know what I'm saying? But I plan on still being able to fuck at 100. I'm going to get, I'm going to have me 100 years worth of pussy. You know, so <laughs> I don't know what everybody else, you know, everybody Hey, else man, you know, know we on YouTube, man. Trust me. The owners of YouTube is planning on being here in that number. Them niggas <laughs> ready. They ready. They understand the game. They did. They they together. They got they shit together. They already know. Oh, okay, we we anti aging because see that's the level of health. First, with your health, you got to work on dealing with your ailments. Then you got to work on restoring your vitality. Once you get there, and you continue to practice, you know, inner hygiene. Now you you anti aging. Now you're going you. But there is no anti-aging motherfuckers walking around half sick, dick don't work, vagina don't work, women can't come, can't make breast milk. We worthless. You fuck. You got big fat ass. Like shit is crazy. Where you getting a big fake, you you getting a big fake ass to make me horny for what? What do you make? What are you getting the big booty enhancement for? And you getting me horny. So then what? Now we fuck. Oh. You can bear, you can't even produce babies. Oh, we produce a baby, you can't feed the motherfucker. Wait, what the what? No, see, this is this is shit is crazy. No, no, no. We need working vaginas, man. I don't give a fuck, motherfuckers. White, yellow, red, purple, brown, pink. What I need a working fucking vagina, a working womb. <laughs> I need, I need titties that work and make milk. I need vaginas that can pass a baby through it. Babies ain't supposed to come through the fucking stomach. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the reasons why we sick because, you know, a large portion, like 40% of a baby's immune system for the rest of their life depends on whether they slide down that vaginal canal or not. So when you have a C-section baby, you automatically crippled your baby's immune system forever. Then if you couple that C-section baby with powdered formula, now you done fucked up his central nervous system and his brain development. So the brain development, chances are the child's never gonna have the same. A child that's powder fed is never gonna have the same brain development as a child that's breastfed. That is just statistically a fucking what it is. There's no way around that. So once you have the baby C-section, immune compromised, powder feed the motherfucker, his brain compromised, how is he going to compete with motherfuckers, whether they white, red, yellow, brown, green, that slid out their mama vagina, that drank off their mama breasts? How are he going to compete in school with them motherfuckers? And if you can't compete in school with the motherfuckers, then what you going to do? You got to beat them up and make fun of them. So now <laughs> you have a good job or be an entrepreneur and you get ready to go to jail. Your whole, your whole direction is set because you came out vagina and had powder. You came out of a stomach and had powder while he came out of a vagina and had a titty. Like just, we start right there at the basics. You know what I'm saying? Like, or even worse, you might've came out of a fucking jar. You might be an IVF nigga. You might be synthetic. You didn't even come out of a fucking other human. You didn't even come from a human. Nigga, you came from a jar. You came from a container. So how you how you gonna even compete with a motherfucker that came? I like it's this. I like we we just not even there. We don't understand. The joke is on us. 
we thinking, oh, look, I'm going to take these pills and have fake twins. Like, what? Nah, bro. That's why I got fraternal twins. I don't have drug twins. Drug twins is identical twins. The drugs make you, they split the egg and make you have identical twins. I got two sets of fraternal twins. My shit all natural. All natural. Potent sperm. I, I remember back in the day, I watched a video of you, man. You was on, uh, talking about the pumpkin seeds. What's up with the pumpkin seeds? Raw pumpkin seeds. That's the way to go. All right. Bro, yeah, you talking about the pumpkin seeds. You talking about the dates. You still doing the things with the dates? A little bit of dates, yeah. Okay. All the right. thing with dates is people get a little carried away with dates. And they think, oh, dates is healthy. And then once you get the idea that something's healthy, we start ODing. And we think, oh. If dates is healthy, it's okay for me to have six or seven or ten dates inside my smoothie. So now you, 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 you don't realize, nigga, you vegans get diabetes, nigga. We, vegans get cancer, like we, that don't mean because it's vegan or because it's healthy. Like you, you can't think it's, it's coupling. You know what right. I'm saying? That's the law of duality that we really didn't understand coming from Kemet. Duality is built on the shoulders of Maat, which means balance. So That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, it's not about a thing being, it's not about a thing being good for you because you go, oh, well, garlic is good for you. So I'm going to take garlic pills every day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not how that goes. Garlic is good for you in certain spots, but garlic is also a blood thinner. So the moment you start taking garlic every day for no apparent reason, nigga, you're thinning out your blood. And when you thin out the blood, that means your blood can carry less nutrients. So you actually working against yourself. The fucking garlic pills you're taking every day is fucking you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, but but garlic is great. You know what I'm saying? But if you're overdoing it, then you, you know what I'm saying? So you got to know what's the right amount. You know what I'm saying? Like vitamin D pills. Everybody since pandemic taking vitamin D pills. But niggas taking 400 IU, that ain't nothing. That's nothing. You might as well not take no fucking vitamin D pills. You taking 400 IU, 1,000 IU, that's nothing. That You might as well not take it. it that's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. That's you need you need thousands of, you know, like it's, it doesn't even make sense. You know what I'm saying? But they tell you, oh, you gotta be careful. You take too much vitamin D pills, then you know, you might have, you know, calcium build up in the arteries and blah, blah, blah. You know, but that's only because niggas don't know that they're supposed to couple, see, couple duality, you're supposed to couple vitamin D with vitamin K. You know what I'm saying? Because vitamin K is gonna control the calcium. That's why vitamin Uh-oh, K is the right sunshine down. vitamin, not vitamin D. That's the, literally the nickname of vitamin K. But they don't promote vitamin K because vitamin K fucks up almost all of the medication. So vitamin K, if you on any kind of medication, the first thing they tell you is you can't take vitamin K. But you need vitamin K for your hair to grow and all kinds of other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, know, but you say all couple this vitamin D with vitamin K? Yeah, vitamin D got to go with vitamin K. Yo, John, you got anything for Dr. Anki before we get out of here? Um, I'm just listening, man. I'm on the road. Um, I've been in and out, so now nah, I'm, I'm just here honored to be in the presence of the brothers. So, uh, no, nah, I, I ain't got nothing. Thank you, Brother Reverend. Salute. Definitely salute, appreciate man. you I'm listening, safe, riding, do whatever you're doing. You're on the mission. You still, you still, you know. You're still in that number. You're still in attendance. I appreciate it. You could be anywhere in there right now tonight, but you're with us. But now, nah, Inky, man, thanks for coming through, uh, letting us pick your nah, brain. Thanks for having me. Thanks for extending the platform so we could reach reach the people behind you and reach the people to the left of you and to the right. You know how they do in church. Hey, turn over to the right and say, how much money your ass spent on melanin and epigenetic research? Turn to the left and say, this nigga wild in the motherfucker if he spent more on McDonald's than he did on his future generations. Like, you know, we gotta we gotta get to that space. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, yeah, definitely. Yo, we almost we there. Gonna, we gonna put some together and, and and give you a good donation in a few days. For sure. Yeah. Brother Rebel, I do got a question. Wait, wait. another good donation because every time I come on the platform, it's a good donation. See, yeah, that's, the, that's that donation time. Man. You got yeah, you, that's, that's that time donation. You know what I'm saying? Time. Hog girl, girl got a question for you, Inky. Yep. Yeah, you um, and you may have already answered it, but uh, you touched on, and and I gotta be honest, um, when you talk about how much we're spending on other things versus spending on our health, um, you you hit you you know you hit me with that one, um, but I you know respectfully you, you know it's it's, it's true. So, um, my question is. 
what are these resources that we should be looking into, the books and things like that, if you could list a few of them, uh, to help us better uh, understand, you know, health and, and what we should be doing? Um, well, like I say, man, join up with the team. Patreon.com forward slash Dr. Inky. Let's get in there. You know what I'm saying? We need an army. That's that's where I would start at. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm putting, because I left YouTube and, you know, I got like 15 years of archive. I'm just putting it all over there. All the scientific articles, books, videos, everything is there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like more, you know, it's more information there than you could probably, you know, if, if you had, if you did, if you studied every day, eight hours a day, it'd probably take you, you know, 50 years to go through all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a smorgasbord library of shit there. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there to make sure that, you know, curating, like, you know, what, what are you trying to do with yourself? You know what I'm saying? Cause we don't need to learn random health shit. Like that's, you know, that, that ain't really, like, what are you trying to do? Cause what you trying to do might be different than what he trying to do different than what he trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Like you might be trying to get your beach body together. He might be trying to work on, you know, getting his wife pregnant. You, he might be trying to work on diabetes. He might be, so, you know, that's the difference with like a health lecture versus any other subject. You know what I'm saying? I learned that early on, like, people would come to the health lecture and when I do Q and a that questions would be totally different than the fucking subject I was talking about. And that's because people come in to hear about themselves. So I had to learn that, you know what I'm saying? Like they, if they know you there, they come in, this motherfucker want to hear about Alzheimer's. This nigga want to hear about building muscle. This nigga want to hear about this black fungus that's growing on his toes. This motherfucker like, so, you know, this shit is specific. And I think that we should all just, you know, like focus on that. You know what I'm saying? Because once we experience the magic just a little bit, it all becomes real. You know, I'm a person that just was lucky enough to have real magic in my life. You know what I'm saying? My heart stopped. You know, ectoastole is a real condition. You know what I'm saying? Where you have a seizure, your heart stops. You know what I'm saying? Um, then my daughter, neck broken, spine broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, so hey. from those situations, being able to come back like there's nobody on earth that could explain away what I had already experienced. So now it was just a matter of me trying to study and, and put myself in a space where I could not only hash out exactly what the inner workings of how, what, when, why, how those things happen, but then take it to another space where I could duplicate it and try to help other people with it. Like, yo, nigga, I was able to do this with my aunt. You know what I'm saying? She had stage four cancer. You know what I'm saying? And woo -woo. And my auntie, you know what I'm saying? She had stage four cancer. She didn't let us know until she was almost gone. And I I got rid of her cancer, you know what I'm saying? And um, I knew like a thousand percent less than what I knew now, you know what I'm saying, back then. But, you know, I was armed with the story of fucking Osiris. You know what I'm saying? Like that was my, you know, I was like, okay, this is, fuck it, this, I'm going in. God damn it, Osiris said, <laughs> the comedic legend says, my man civilized the world with the purple grape. So I just went insane on that study, you know what I'm saying? And started to learn about, you know, unpacking that story. Like, okay, the purple grape, what the fuck is special about this purple grape? Oh shit. So the purple grape can either attract candida to the body or repel candida from the body. What makes the difference if it has a seed in it? If it has a seed in it, the seed and the skin function as an antifungal together. If there's no seed, then it's the sugar takes over and now it becomes something that breeds alcohol, candida and all this kind of shit in the body. So then I start understanding the fungus relationship with the mucous membrane, the same way as like roots uh, in the soil work with fungus, your mucous membrane works with yeast and fungus and just going crazy, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, and I was able to, you know, put her on a strict diet and do some stuff with her. And, um, you know, she, she got another seven years out of life and they told her she had a couple of weeks. Um, that was my first person with cancer that I, that I you know, um, was able to work with. Then uh, there was a sister from Queensbridge Projects. You know, she's kind of famous now. I don't know where the fuck she at. I need to find her and make her one of the sponsors for this shit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna write this down to look her up and find her ass. Well, her name is Jessica Sepulveda. And she wound up being like, um, at the time she was in the music universe, but 
she um she wound up being like a, one of them high level executives for Comedy Central and shit. But I hope you know I reversed her cancer um, first time, the second time we you know it was a thing. But twice we battled cancer. You know what I'm saying? So her style still floating around because of me. You know what I'm saying? So um, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but I you know the success never made me get complacent. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to still keep learning more, refining, 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 refining what I was doing. And um, it wasn't until I had the privilege of running that fruit fast for damn near 10 years to be able to like have like a, like a lab rats of actual humans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From all different likes. Sick motherfuckers, extra healthy niggas. I had fucking Super Bowl champions on this, like all kinds of motherfuckers, kids, old folks, everybody. And then been able to, you know, really examine how the body functions, black body, white body, brown body, skinny body, fat body, and put this shit together. So. Sure. Well, you making Sabi proud, brother. Know that. that. That's always was the goal. I wanted to have the same impact on diabetes as Sabi had on AIDS and HIV. You know Smelling saying? inverse diabetes, y'all. Man. This is Dr. Inky. Go check his uh Patreon and uh hit that cash app. You know, because his brother's looking out for more than himself. He's looking out for all of the people we love. So we, we gotta support this brother. Appreciate that. You got your number, right? I got your number. Don't no, no, not Inky. Yeah. Yeah, I got your number. Five eight six two nine eight five thousand. Now y'all five eight six two nine eight five thousand two nine eight five thousand. Yeah, text me right now. I know it say five thousand. He's like, "Well, that must be a fake number." No, I don't fuck with no Google numbers, no app numbers, none of that. In Detroit, that's Michigan. That, yes, sir. Detroit, right? I'm yeah. from the Bronx, but I live out here in Detroit. Okay. In the backyard, man. We gonna link soon, y'all. But yo, no. No. anybody got anything else to say? No, nah, I enjoyed the brother, man. I always like um Hey, we gonna um, we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk that alien shit though. That that yeah, ain't yeah, on the table. We're coming back to that alien shit. Little, little, little small child, it's a little small listen, child. I got nah, 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 nah. I love it because the Quran say, you know, leave that shit up to Allah. And I, I, I think the Quran handles it best because we got so many earthly things that we need to deal with. It's not that it's it's like, oh, we shouldn't pay attention to what's going on out there. But again, it's priority. Our house ain't right. You know what I'm saying? We right. worried about shit flying around outside the fucking shit out there. Nah. And then, I, you know, I, I've been here. Look, if they come in here, they want some shit from here. So we need to get this shit together so we can either defend what the fuck it is we got. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, that's true. Like, we, we got to focus. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Or if they might be ancestors, you know what I'm saying? Then we got to be, we got to clean this shit up to make them proud. Because uh, if they ancestors, because that's a, that's a line of thought. If they ancestors, then they would be coming here to give us ass whoopings. Because we, we're we wild children that's out of fucking control. You know what I'm saying? So we, mm. we you know, I, I want to be on a roll. I want to be on honor roll. That's ancestors coming. I want to be on honor roll. That's how I want to, when they land the ship, I wanna, hey, okay, you, you, you over there. The rest of you niggas, yeah, all you, yeah, you niggas over here that didn't give a fuck about the genes you had. Yeah, the shit that we left you, like the only one thing that we gave you niggas to take care of. Yeah, zap. <laughs> we just zapping the fuck out of you niggas. You're gone. You niggas didn't take, you had no value for your DNA, so you, you don't deserve to be here. Zoop, you out of here. Nah, that's what's up. So either way you look at it, I'm like, nah, we gotta get our shit together first. That's Dr. Inky, yo. Hey. So, it's so a Rebels round table, man. We can do this all night. I know we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. You see the guards, y'all. Us. Peace, peace, man. Us. 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 Yo.